As we explore Newton's laws of motion, we shall be in essence revealing what causes motion. This idea that forces control the motion of bodies was first described by Sir Isaac Newton, and as a result, three laws were caved out of these descriptions. These three laws of motion were named after this very scientist, Sir Isaac Newton, and so we refer to them as Newton's laws of motion. So we we'll look at the first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion is also referred to as the law of inertia. Now to understand Newton's first law, it's important that you grasp what inertia is. Now so the question here is, what is inertia? We shall describe inertia using a description. Now, when you are moving in a car and the car is suddenly braked or it suddenly stops, you realize that yes, the car will stop, but you as an individual will continue moving forward even when the car has stopped, like you're seeing in the video. When, when a car breaks instantly and you're seated on that chair, you'll find yourself jerking forward much as the car has stopped. Now that tendency of you to jerk forward even when the car has been stopped is what we are calling inertia. So that effect of inertia can be described as the body's tendency to be reluctant to move when at rest or reluctant to stop when in motion. If I'm to refer back to our illustration when the when the car was when the car stopped immediately you as the person that was in the car you are reluctant to stop that is why much as the body the car stopped the body that was in the car that was also moving along with the car for it it continued moving forward so it means the body was reluctant to stop so this brings us to this conclusion that inertia is the property that keeps a body in its state of motion and it resists any effort to change it or we can say that inertia is the body's tendency to be reluctant to move when it is at rest or reluctant to stop when it is motion. Now this idea of inertia is where Newton's law, first law comes from. So in short, Newton's first law simply states that a body will continue in its state of rest or uniformly accelerated motion unless it's acted upon by an external force. If I may break that down further, it simply means that if a body is in in motion, it will continue in that state of motion unless it is stopped by a force. Or if your body is at rest, it will continue to be at rest until another force comes and acts on it and causes it to move. That is Newton's first law of motion. Newton's second law of motion. Now in this video, I'm going to explain Newton's second law of motion, but I'm going to explain it from scratch. Understanding Newton's second law of motion requires us to be able to understand or to know what exactly momentum is. Now, of course, by definition, momentum is the product of mass and velocity. But what exactly does this mean? This is a mathematical statement that moment is the product of mass and velocity. Let's use an illustration. I'm going to use these two. I'm going to illustrate this is a voltmeter, of course, and this is a cover of a cell holder. But I'm going to take this take take this to be like a big lorry, and this is a small car. These two are moving together. We have the bigger lorry and the smaller lorry, and they are both moving. Of course, because this is a lorry, it is having more mass. It is bigger and it is heavier than this small car. When these two are moving, it is easier to stop this one because it has little mass, it is lighter. It's easier to stop this car than this lorry. When this thing is in motion, it is harder to stop it. It takes a lot to get it to stop. The mere fact that this thing is heavy and it is very hard, it, it, is, it is harder to stop it than this light one. In layman's understanding, we shall say that it is harder to stop this thing from being, it is harder to stop this moving lorry why because it is having more momentum than that one the reason as to why this lorry is having more momentum than this one is because as this thing is moving it is heavier so it is moving with more weight than this and so 
it becomes harder to stop it because it is having more momentum as it's moving. It has more momentum than that. Uh, think of momentum as mass in motion. Yeah, momentum is actually mass in motion because this if this mass is like a thousand kilograms and this mass here is two kilograms. This mass in motion is a thousand. It's more than this mass. So because this mass is more than that, this mass here is definitely more momentum than that. Momentum, as a terminology, is affected by two factors. The first factor is that momentum is affected by the mass of the object and then the velocity of the object. Those two affect the momentum of the object. That is why we shall say that by definition momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Mathematically speaking, momentum is equal to mass times velocity, and momentum is denoted by small p. p is going to be m, mass, and velocity, just like that. Now, we all know that mass, the SI unit for mass is um, kilograms, and the SI unit for velocity is meters per second to the power negative 1. It's meters per second. So, it means that the SI unit for momentum is kilogram meters per second that's this is the SI unit for momentum now that uh, this is the mathematical representation of momentum and its SI unit now let's look at a, let's consider a body that has been moving from a certain velocity and it's moving and its velocity is increasing right before us is a velocity time graph we are having this graph here it is, let's say we are having one of those cars that we've been illustrating using our illustration before. It is right here, the car, and it is moving. Let's say as it started moving, it started at a certain initial velocity. Let's call the initial velocity u. So as this car, as time goes by, this car's velocity keeps increasing. So as it's moving, let's say after, let's say one second, its velocity increases to a new velocity. As it's moving to maybe the second velocity, the second second, its velocity keeps increasing to another, a new velocity. So this car, as it is moving, its velocity keeps increasing from a certain velocity u to a certain velocity v. Now remember, we said that momentum, which is denoted by p, is going to be equal to mass times velocity. Now, if we are looking at a specific car, it means that as this car is moving, its mass will be constant, right? Yes, its mass will keep constant. It won't change. But it is its velocity that is increasing from this initial velocity up to a certain final velocity we shall call v. So it means even as the car is moving, it is moving, depend, uh, it moves, its momentum keeps changing depending on the velocity of that car or the velocity of that body that is moving. So it means that if it moves at a higher speed, it means its momentum will be high. And if the velocity is low, or if it's moving at a lower speed, its velocity will be low. So what does this mean? This simply means that as this velocity keeps changing, whether the velocity is very high or very low, it is changing with respect to time. This velocity can move from here. It can change instantaneously up to velocity v, and it will take a shorter time here. Likewise, this velocity can move from here up to there. And it will, in both cases here and here, the velocity, the final velocity has been arrived at, but in different time frames. This has taken a shorter time than that one to reach the, the, this final velocity. So this simply means that even as a body is moving, its rate of change of momentum, or if its rate of change of velocity, or the rate at which this momentum keeps changing, depending on this velocity, will also vary. Now, according to Newton, he, re he observed in his experiments that this rate of change of momentum as the body is moving is directly proportional to the force applied or to the force that is making this body move. And that rate of change of momentum being directly proportional to the force that is applied is what is constituting or it is what is making Newton's second law of motion. So if I may restate it, Newton's second law of motion simply states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied and it takes place in the direction of the force. 
So we say that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied. Let's take this point and that point. Right here, when the body, the, let's, we are taking a car, it's having a certain mass m. This point, it is having an, an initial velocity which we are going to call u. So it means to get the initial momentum of this car, it's going to be mass times initial velocity. Let's call this p initial. The initial momentum is mu. Then it means that the final momentum after this body has moved at this point when the velocity has now changed to v, it means the final momentum, that is momentum final, is going to be equal to uh, mass of the body or the car times v, the final velocity. Now that being said, what is the change in momentum as the body moves from this point to that point? Now change in momentum, it's final momentum minus initial momentum. So our final momentum, we denoted it as PF minus initial momentum, which is PI. So our final momentum in this case, it is mass times the final velocity. So it's going to be MV minus initial momentum, which is M times U. So this here is our change in momentum. Let me call it change. Delta means change in momentum. Now, what about... The, but the uh, uh, Newton's law talks about the rate of change of momentum. So it means when we are dealing with the rate of change of this, we are going to in, in, include the time element because now the thing was moving from from this point to move from an initial velocity of u to a final velocity of v. There was a certain time that was covered, a certain change in time. So to find the rate of change of this momentum, so the rate of change of momentum is going to be given by our final momentum which is mass times ve final velocity minus initial momentum which is mass times initial velocity divide that by the change in time let's call it delta t change in time or simply t so this rate of change of momentum which is this is what newton is saying is directly proportional to the force applied so it means that this expression is directly proportional to the force applied. So according to Newton's second law of motion, he says that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied. And in this case, the rate of change of momentum here is this, mv minus mu, divide that by the change in time, is directly proportional to the force applied. Now, if we are to factorize out the m, the mass, m is outside into v minus u over the change in time that is directly proportional to the force applied now if we may look at this this is v minus u over time when we factorize out the m this becomes the rate of change of velocity that is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time and from our previous videos we we concluded that the rate of change of velocity is actually acceleration or actually by definition we know acceleration to be the rate of change of velocity because it's velocity change in velocity over change in time so the rate of change of velocity is actually acceleration so you will find that this expression actually is mass times acceleration is directly proportional to f or if we, i may rearrange this it means force is directly proportional to m a now uh to remove this constant of proportionality, of course, we shall introduce a constant. F is going to be equal to K M A, where M is mass, A is acceleration due to then K is the constant. Now, to eliminate that constant, K, if the mass that is moving is one kilogram and the and and it is moving at an acceleration of one meter per second and um, the force being applied is one newton it means our value of k will be equal to one and since our value of k will be equal to one under those conditions it therefore makes us conclude that that f is going to be equal to k which is one which is m times a so f is equal to m a is an equation that is also used to define second Newton's second law of motion. 
Now force here is in newtons or let's say the the SI unit of force is in newtons and what is a newton if I may derive it it is that F being equal to mass times acceleration we know that mass is in kilograms and then the acceleration is in times meters per second squared so it means that uh, the force is equal to kilogram meters per second squared so it means that one uh, one newton is equivalent to one kilograms meters per second squared so if you may define what a newton is by definition a newton is a force which it is a force which produces an acceleration of one meters per second when it acts on a body whose mass is one kilogram and so this is how we can also define the newton and also newton's second law of motion is expressed mathematically like this again this also leads us to another phenomena if we may start from where we started here that a uh, change in momentum is directly proportional to the force and probably you just introduced the equal signs that f is equal to mv minus mu divide that by the change in momentum you will find that if we multiply this time on both sides times change in time here and times change in time right there we shall end up with an expression that force times the change in time is equal to mv minus mu now mv minus mu is simply the change in momentum so this change in momentum is equal to force times time or force times the change in time now this force times the change in time is what we are calling impulse and this impulse is equal to and the change in momentum of the body is going to be dependent on the force and the time so by definition we can say that the impulse is a term that quantifies the overall effect of a force acting over time and of course impulse is conventionally given the symbol j this impulse is given a symbol j so j which is the impulse is going to be equal to change in momentum which is m v minus m u if we are to make m outside the brackets m into v minus u m the si unit for mass is kilograms and the si unit for velocity this is velocity initial velocity minus final velocity so whatever answer we are getting here is velocity and it is in meters per second square uh, second to the power one or meters per second now the si unit for impulse is kilogram meters per second to the now sometimes you it's it's the, the si unit for impulse is regarded to as newton seconds now how does this newton second come in of course if we break this down it will lead us to this this is the same as saying we know that one newton from what we've been doing previously force is equal to ma we we establish that one newton is the same as one kilogram meters per second squared so this is like saying uh kilogram meters a second to the power negative two that is the newton we have put here multiply that by the second so this is the same as saying uh, kilogram meters per second uh, kilogram meters divide that by second squared because this is s to the power negative two so s squared multiply that by s when you cancel that s with one of that you remain with kilogram meters over second which is the same as saying kilogram meters per second which is the same as our earlier conclusion so it is preferable to say that the si unit for impulse is newton 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 seconds so if i may make a recap in this video we have covered about second newton second law of motion we started with momentum which we said that was the product of mass and velocity we went ahead and talked about the uh, newton second law of motion which states that a body the, which states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied and it takes place in the direction of the force we went ahead and talked about the impulse which we by definition we said that 
it is a term that quantifies the overall effect of a force acting over time. Newton's second law of motion worked examples. Now we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. This means that when an object is in motion and it is such that its velocity is changing as it moves, then the body is said to be accelerating. Now a body can only accelerate when it has a resultant force acting on it. That is, if you push an object with a certain force and the, ob the object will accelerate, now, if you push that same object harder, that is, if you use a bigger force, it means the object will accelerate at a higher rate. This only serves to show that there is a relationship between the force that I am using to push the object and the acceleration with which it moves. Of course, if the object in question is light, it will, more, it will move more quickly. However, if I use the same force I previously used on a light object, on a heavier object, the heavier object will definitely accelerate more slowly. This brings us to the conclusion that the force that I am using is having a relationship with the mass of that object and it is also having a relationship with the acceleration. Now, this relationship between force, mass, and acceleration was derived in our previous video as F is equal to ma, F being the force in newtons, m being the mass in kilograms, and acceleration being in meters per second squared. So in this video, we shall use this very relationship to work out some problems. This is Kisembo Academy. We are being told that what net force is required to accelerate a car at a rate of 2 meters per second if the mass of the car is 3000 kilograms. So of course using our relationship we know that F is equal to mass times acceleration. Now we are being asked to find the force, what is the net force, that is what is required. So to find this force, force is going to be equal to the mass, now our mass is 3000 kilograms multiplied that by acceleration which is 2 meters per second and of course our answer here will be 6000 kilograms uh, this mass is in kilograms this is in meters per second squared so kilograms meters per second squared when those two are multiplied they give us a newton so this is 6000 newtons now take note that when we are dealing with this kind of relationship force is equal to ma for us to qualify this answer to be in newtons we have to make sure that the mass is in kilograms and the acceleration given is in meters per second squared. Now, if these parameters of mass and acceleration are given to us in any other units, let's say mass has been given to us in grams and acceleration is given to us, let's say, in um, kilo, uh, kilometers per hour or something like that, it would mean that first we have to change those parameters to the required units. Regardless of what unit you've been given in the question, you have to make sure that the mass you're operating in is converted to kilograms or is in kilograms and the acceleration is in meters per second. It is only when mass is in kilograms and acceleration is in meters per second squared that the answer you get will qualify to be written as 6,000 newtons. Why? Because one newton, again from our derivation in the previous video, one newton is equivalent to one kilogram a meter one kilogram meter per second squared we'll go on to our next example what is the force required to accelerate a bowling ball of mass 10 kilograms at a rate of 3 meters per second the rate of 3 meters per second squared this is the acceleration this is the mass we're being asked to find the force so we know that force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration that's going to become Mass is 10 and it's in kilograms. Multiply that by the acceleration, which is 3 meters per second squared. And we shall end up with our answer as 10 or 30 newtons. So moving on to our third. This is more like the previous ones. We are being told that Tim has a car that accelerates at 5 meters per second squared. If the car has a mass of a thousand kilograms, how much force does the car produce again? Force is equal to mass times acceleration. This question is more like the previous ones. Our mass is a thousand kilograms and our acceleration is five meters per second. So definitely when you multiply those two, you're able to get the answer. I will leave you do that for yourself 
as you go into the next number. Now in this question we are being told that what is the mass of a falling rock if it produces a force of 148 newtons. Now here we are dealing with a rock that is falling. And what do we know about this rock? They want us to find the mass of the falling rock. It is producing a force of 148 newtons. So if we look at it, force is equal to mass times the acceleration. The force it's producing is 148 newtons. 148 newtons is going to be equivalent to the mass which is being required of us in the question. They're asking us the mass, so it is m we are looking for. Multiply that by the acceleration. Now the question does not state the acceleration anywhere. But if you look at the question, it's telling us that what is the mass of a falling rock? It means that it is falling from above towards the earth. Now if a rock is falling, it means that it is falling under the influence of gravity. And the uh, acceleration, it means, and gravitational attraction has got a certain force. The acceleration due to gravity is a constant which is either 9.8 meters per second squared or if you round this off it's 10 meters per second squared. Now in most of the questions that you'll be asked or examinations they'll always specify what figure to use. You can either use 9.8 meters per second squared or 10 meters per second squared. Now this one since this one is falling it is a rock that is falling it means it is falling under the influence of gravity and so it means that the acceleration we shall use here will be the acceleration due to the influence of gravity and this acceleration due to the influence of gravity we shall use 10 for this case. So it is m times 10 so this is going to become 10 m is going to give us 148 Newtons, when we divide both sides by 10, this will go with that. We shall remain with our mass as by when we cancel that zero, this decimal point moves up to there, so we shall remain with 14.8. So our mass here is going to be 14.8, and that 14.8 is in kilograms. Again, please take note of the units. The mass is in kilograms, it is because look this is in newtons and the acceleration is in meters per second squared we we'll get to our next number in our next question you are being told that what is the mass of a truck if it produces a force of that so it's producing a force of 4 14000 newtons so the force produced is 14000 newtons while accelerating its acceleration is 5 meters per second squared and they're asking us to find the mass again we shall say that our force is equal to mass times acceleration our force here is 14,000 is going to be giving us our mass which mass we are being told to look for m times our acceleration it's accelerating at a rate of 5 meters per second squared so which is 5 meters per second so this becomes 5m is equal to 14,000 when we divide both sides by 5 our value of m in this case is going to become by 5 once by 5. So our mass in conclusion is going to be 2800 kilograms. In this question you are being told that what is the acceleration of a softball if it has a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms and hits the catcher's glove with a force of 25 newtons. Now we are having what is the acceleration of the softball. So they want us to find the acceleration of the softball. And what are the parameters of the softball? It's having a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms. So if f is equal to mass times acceleration, we want to find the acceleration here of a softball that is having a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms. So this is 0 0.5 kilograms multiply that by the acceleration which you are looking for is equal to it's the force is 25 newtons now of course this is the same as saying a half a is equal to 25 now when you multiply two on both sides our acceleration is 50 so meaning our value of acceleration there is 50 meters per second squared and in our final exam, in our final question, we, shall, we are being asked, your own car has a mass of 3,000 kilograms. If the car produces a force of 5,000 newtons, how fast will it accelerate? We are being asked to still find the acceleration. Again, it's the same as before. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. 
uh, we are being told that the mass of the car is 3,000 kilograms, so this is going to be 3,000 kilograms. Multiply that by the acceleration. Now the acceleration of this car is what we are required to find because we are being told that how fast will it accelerate. So we need the acceleration and this is going to be equal to the force. They are telling us that the car produces a force of 5,000 newtons. So this is 5,000. Now definitely this is going to become 3,000. A is giving us 5,000. When you divide both sides by 3,000. We shall end up with our acceleration as 5 over 3, uh, that is in meters per second squared. And that's it. If you have any issues with these, any of those numbers, or there's anything that is not clear in these few worked examples, please let me know in the comments below.